we welcome our online congregation. God bless you for being part of the service. All right, uh, this morning we're going straight to the word. Second Chronicles chapter 20, we'll read verse 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20, we shall be reading verse 20. Hallelujah. Um, I will encourage us after the service, I'll make sure I finish on time. I will finish on time. Let's all of us wait briefly. Amen. Um, most especially, or every one of us, let's wait briefly for five minutes. I hope I'll get it done on time, far ahead of time for that, so that I don't take your time beyond the necessary time. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20. So they arose, the new King James Version. So they arose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. Hallelujah. The key words there are, or the key word there is believe. Father, we pray that we will come to the level of believing you, trusting you more than anything else in the mighty name of Jesus. Tonight, this, this, this morning, Lord, we, we ask for more of you. Guide, lead, and direct us by your spirit. In Jesus' name we prayed. So they arose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa, and as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O chapel of grace. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. Hallelujah. Most times there is a struggle for believers to believe. <laughs> Amen. We are believers to believe. Am I right? That's why you are called a believer. We are called believers so that we can believe. Believe in the Lord, our God. Then we will be established. And believe his prophets and you will prosper. I'm just reminded. You know, we started the year, God sent us a word. And we believe in that word of impact. I don't know how many of us are believing that word that God sent to us through a servant, ordinary man like me. Amen. You believe in, you will be established. You believe God, you will be established. Then you believe the vessel then you will prosper. Simple. I remember some years ago, I was in Austria, 2001, and those days when you get out of that homeland, they don't want, people don't want you to come back. <laughs> and, you know, and I finished my program and I, was, I had a job, you know, I had a job back while I was in the program. So I, I was telling my pastor that I'm flying back. I have a job. And everybody said, don't come. Stay where you are. Stay where you are. I said, I'm coming. My heavens are open forever. Because that was the word of the, of the let's go fishing of December. I traveled in March. December 2000. Let's go fishing. And heavens are open forever. Something like that. Or a new thing. Something like that. And I said, my heavens are open forever. The word has been spoken, so I'm keen to that word. By the January, I was traveling. March, I traveled. I was coming back, and I said, I'm coming back. My heavens are open forever. I came back a week. My PhD admission arrived. 
My pastor's wife, I was in night vigil. A week I've arrived in June. The first night vigil I was there, then my pastor's wife brought a parcel. At the end of the night vigil, she gave it to me. She said, this is a letter. I never knew that I used the church address for my Bravo invested in the application. When you don't have a place, your life is the church. <laughs> Amen. I never knew that I used my church address as the address that I have in life. God has brought us from a far place. Hallelujah. And she brought this letter. I said, this letter came to the church office and it's for you. And, and I opened it in the night vigil and I smiled. She said, are you traveling again? I said, yes. I didn't even, I couldn't even. Hallelujah. My prayer is that you be established and you prosper in the mighty name of Jesus. This morning we're talking same on transition from tragedy to triumph. Say with me. From tragedy to triumph. You will triumph in the mighty name of Jesus. I don't know what has befallen you, what has befallen you but God will turn it around in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 40 30 to 31. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. Isaiah 40, 30 to 31. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Hallelujah. Even young men with the weak. Hallelujah. I mean, your strength as a spiritual being is because you are young. I've seen elderly men doing things far beyond young men. I've seen the likes of our general Basia, the likes of the senior men of God. Today they are there, tomorrow they are there, the next day they are there, the next day they are there, the next day they are there, and they are still going for, for us after five hours. I was tired that I was sleeping. Amen. I've seen, I've seen senior pastors all over the place. They are going. They finish preaching by 11, 11 p.m. Sunday morning, they are from another part of the country. They are in another place. Still continuing. The next morning, they are there at 6 a.m. For us, our sheet for the next three for the next three days. Um, it is well. Even youths shall faint and be weary, but the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall. So what? Where is the strength? Those that wait on the Lord, that can have a staying power. Staying in God's presence like the encounters we had in divine encounter. Amen. We, in the business, you need that kind of environment to charge you up. If not, you continue to be busy and busy. You think you are busy. You need an energy to be awake. You need, we need an energy to be awake as spiritual beings. We cannot be in that kind of environment and say we are still what weak. May the Lord help us not to be weak, not to be weary, not to faint in the name of Jesus. And now in Isaiah 43, it move forward, 18 to 19. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Hallelujah. God is saying, I will do something new. Now, can I, is it possible to have the message translation of that? Is it possible? He's saying, I will do a new thing. Some of us are still looking. God is doing the new. We are already in the new. Be alert. Be present. I'm about doing something brand new. Brand new. It's busting out. Don't you see it? There is, there it is. I'm making a road through the desert, rivers in the 
Badlands. Things around you, are they bad? God will make a way for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. You know, I, I've been, yesterday I, I took Pastor Andrea to, to an event where she was, uh, she was awarded an award, whatever, for they said, the, the award is the, the awarders. Is that the word? The award, the, the, the award that said is a, is a for impactful life. <laughs> and I came down and I said, But our team is impact. Amen. Amen. And we'll be saying that all of us beyond the church must go and make impact. Summary of the award was how she was able to despite the tragedy of her family circumstance for a young boy. Turning things around to triumph. They had our testimony, our story. She was ministry somewhere else and they, she had, and that's how the award came. From tragedy what? Despite all the challenges we had as a family and still staying in what God has called us to do and triumphing. From tragedy to triumph. Hallelujah. God will do a new thing in your life. Three things this morning. Transition. Tragedy to triumph. Number one thing I want to, to look at is that the triumphant church is a supernatural church. The triumphant church, if we must triumph, the triumphant church is a supernatural church. The, the triumphant Christian is a supernatural Christian. The triumphant believer is a supernatural what? Believer. Never take things ordinarily. You are a supernatural being. Take things supernaturally. Because the supernatural controls the physical, the natural. Everything that is happening around you is Controlled by supernatural forces. Second Corinthians 10, 4 to 5. For the weapons, Second Corinthians 4, 10, 4 to 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments and every item that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Hallelujah. Super, we are in the supernatural era. We are supernatural beings. And the Lord will get this right for us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So the triumphant church is a supernatural church. The Christian church is one that exercises dominion over powers of darkness. We were somewhere else some years ago. I was out. Pastor Andrea was out. The cleaning team came on a Saturday. And they said they saw something there at the front of the church. Dressed up for burial. We've seen all kinds. You are in a war zone. Some of us are still war to him at, at, at ease in Zion. We are in a war zone. Beyond the fact that we are the only non-other religions property owners in this, from maybe from here to the university. We are the only non-other religion owners of property. Are you, getting, are you hearing me? That means you are surrounded by wolves. To take work, work, God, God's work just like that. Ephesians 6 verse 10 to 12 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the old armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, 
but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, and against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Hallelujah. The powers want you to be a tenant and continue to want you to be a tenant. The powers. Amen. I've seen students buying houses. Why can't you buy your own house? No, I'm not just talking. I've seen students having their own properties in Bradford. The supernatural church, the triumphant church, is a church of signs, wonders, and miracles. In this new era, for us to be a triumphant church, we must walk in miracles, walk in signs, walk in wonders. Hallelujah. You must be a miracle worker. Hallelujah. In your place of work, they should see you differently. In your study, they should see you differently. This person is different. Because you are cooked in fire. <laughs> Amen. Yes, on Friday we were cooked in fire. So when you are around, wherever you are, people should see you differently. That is the church that is triumphant. That is the church that is not weak. Mark 16, 17 to 18 says, This sign will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons, speak with new tongues, take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Hallelujah. We must be a supernatural church. A church filled with signs and wonders and miracles. Hallelujah. Take things supernatural. Pastor Andrea was reminding me <laughs> this morning of the award night last, last night. He said, I keep to what you said some 16, 17, 18, 19 years ago. So she said there was an there was award category when she was in the event. The first will be the, the, the person handing the award will be the mayor. Then the the next one, one person. The next one, the next category of people will be the mayor. Then the last category of people will be another person. And she said, ah, if it's the mayor, the mayor is the highest person there. I want my category to be the mayor. So they, so they mentioned the first category of people the mayor was awarding. After that, he would sit down. Another person would come and hand over the award to the next group of people. She said, no, it's the mayor that I want. There's president giving an award. Then after the president, there's one other person giving an award. You should have the honor of the president giving you the award. Everything is what the fact I'm saying is that it's supernatural. Don't just take things, oh, they gave me an award. Anybody can give me the award. It is well. You can have anybody's photograph. So after the first one, and name was not there, the mayor sat down. She said, no, I don't want the second person. I want the, I want the mayor. The next time he's coming. <laughs> Amen. And by the time the third one, the mayor was there to give her the award. Hallelujah. I was in the U.S. when I was ordained the first time. I've done 21 days. They said we should fast for 21 days. And for me, foolishly, I went for 21 days water. You know? Just like that. I thought that was... For me, I, I didn't... Because I was on top of my career and I wanted that the ordination should not be because one pastor saw me doing what I'm doing. Therefore, okay, I'm okay. He's doing some, some things. Therefore, we should... It's good to ordain him. I said no, because it will change my career. I said then. And I said, let this be from God. Not because man saw man working for God. Others can have it as tied to God. For me, it's my, it's my life. My life will change. So I was in this 21 days. I flew from Florida to, to Texas, our camp. And we had... Dickens to be ordained then. We came in there in numbers, hundreds of people. <laughs> and Mommy Gio was laying hands. There were so many. She was laying hands with two hands, left hand, right hand, the next person, next two, the next two. 
and I look, and I found out that I calculated quickly from where, my, where I was kneeling down that if she comes to my turn, the left hand will be the one that will be on me. And I said, no, if this is of God, I want the right hand. But from the calculation of with the two, two people that she was doing, so many, is the left hand that will come on me. And I said, God, I've done, I didn't do this. I, I, if, if this is of you, if, I, if, if, I'm, if this is to be approved, then it must be the right hand. I don't know about any other person that is taking left hand, but I want, as a, as a sign of divine approval, that this is not from man, then I want the right hand. But physically, with calculations, is the left hand that will come on my head. Because so many, she would just do two people, and that two people. And it was getting close to me. I'm sharing this so that you can know that life is supernatural. Don't just take things as they just show up. And after that prayer, within two, three minutes prayer, one second prayer, I said, Lord, just do this to confirm I was weak. It was the 21st day of just water. And I've done all kinds of things because I know that my life will change. After that, my career path will change. Everything about all my plans for life will change. And I want God to really give me the right approval. Within seconds, some people that were late when they made the announcement were running in. They just ran it right so that they, once they missed that, they missed it. And as they run it, they, they try to look at anywhere they can enter. Anywhere they can put, they, put, they push people aside to enter. And as they push people aside, they balance the question for me. And the right hand landed in me. Hallelujah. I, 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 I take things that are spiritual, spiritual. And I don't take things that are spiritual to be like, whatever happens, let it happen. And that has been the journey. So far. I can go more, but that is just one instance. You are a supernatural being. Take things supernaturally. Number two, the triumphant church is a winning church. The triumphant church is a winning church. It is a church that is on fire at Pentecost, Acts 2, 1 to 4. They had that fire encounter and they were no more timid. They begin to win. Am I right? They begin to win all over. They became Spiritual terrorists, if you want to put that word. All over. Winning souls. Then Revelation 3, 15, 16. The Christ church is a church that is hot. Hot for God. Fire brand. I know your works that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm, it's not a lukewarm church. We can't be a lukewarm church. It's a church on fire, Leviticus 6, 12 to 13. The fire must be kept burning day and night. The fire must be kept burning day and night. And that is the sign that is... The, that, that, that is the sign of the firebrand believer. You must be on fire day and night. Day and night, you will be firebrand in the mighty name of Jesus. Fire shall always be burning on the altar. It shall never go out. The fire of God shall always be burning. I've shared it before. There was a time, those days, we used to come to church, thank God for now digital prayer lines now. Those days, we were coming to church every day. Two, three, four years. 
every day there must be prayers in the church. One day I came on a summer afternoon. I think I went to visit some people and I was coming back. I just parked in the car park in my car. I just stayed there. You know, some days you don't want to. You just, you know, you are. I just came so that because my ass was just, just around here by Tesco here. I don't want to go home. And, and I don't want to come into the church. But I just want to stay in God's presence. No, I just want to be alone. Because when I get home, family matter will start. Amen. And I don't want to come into the church because the church inside will be cold, but meanwhile, outside is warm. So I sit in the car. I was just staying there in the car. I saw a brother. No service that day, but he was just walking around the church premises. He was just walking around. A brother, he was just walking around in the afternoon, about four or five o'clock. Summer, so it's so hot, bright, bright. He was moving around the church. And I was parked in the car park. He didn't see me. But after some time, I came back. I said, brother, I saw, I've been seeing you walking around for quite some time now. What's happening? He said, that's my timing. He said, uh, you know, I've got so much problems at home. But, but the spirit said, if I can just come and pray around the church. There's fire in the church. If I can touch the walls of the church and pray, you know, just lay down those problems, it will be solved. And I agreed with this brother. Now you can go in peace. You can go, to, you can go home now. That is the kind of church I'm talking about. When people, when people know that if they come and say a prayer around the church, it will be sought. Why do we go to prayer mountains? Why do we go to prayer mountains or altars or whatever? Or altars? My prayer is that we'll be a winning church. In the mighty name of Jesus. Psalm 55 verse 17 quickly says, Evening and morning, Psalm 55, 17. Evening and morning and at noon, I will pray. David talking. And cry aloud. And he shall hear my voice. The triumphant church is a praying church. Everything around you must come from prayer. Prayer is the greatest privilege that you have as a believer. Prayer is the, is the road to peace, tranquility. If you, want, if, you want, if you want to have strength, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Prayer is where you draw strength. Prayer is, is, what, we call, no, is what we call is, is a spiritual dynamite. With prayer, you can explode. You, you can go to realms that You've never imagined. And someone called me and after a long talk, and I said, so we have you in this commission. Is that commission they call it? Is it? <laughs> Mission or commission. Please, can you come and speak for us in the UN Peace Day? And that is one area that, that one, is, I know that I trained for that. By the time you hear me talk and this is so, we have you we say, we have a UN Peace Day. You are, we're putting you, you are speaking for us at the, UN, at the UN Peace Day. Amen. You become a winning believer. You can no longer hide. Whether you are hiding in the, in the, in the umbrella or whatever, you'll be sorted out. You will be sorted out. You will make impact. That is my desire for all of us this year. But you must Stay in the place of prayer. Prayer is only unto God. Prayer is, 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 the, is, is, is the tool for transition. It's a tool for transition. With prayer, you can turn things around. Prayer is not vague. It is real. It creates. It makes things happen. Prayer makes things happen. You want a global ministry? Be 
a man, a woman of prayer. You want to influence your world? Be a man, a woman of prayer. They said prayer is the most potent weapon for spiritual warfare. You can't contest that. Daniel 6 verse 10 says, Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, that it was done, he went home. And in his upper room, with his windows open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, as was his custom since early days. He was doing that before and he continued. Prayer, no, in prayer is real, it's not fake. It's not vague. It can create. Daniel, with that, it turned things around. From tragedy, what? To triumph. Those three Hebrew boys said, we will not bow to you. We rather bow to our God. If he answers, good. If he doesn't answer, yes, we still bow to him. What is that threat later that has come your way? No, go to your knees. Hallelujah. Go to your knees. Turn things around. Turn your world around with prayer. I know you will walk, but turn your world around. You will see doors that will open. You'll be wondering, how did I get here? How did I get here? Just this week alone, I was amazed. I was in a prayer meeting with about two, three people. Just two, three people. And, this, and, and the person leading was, was like what you call the Jews. How did I get to two, three people prayer meeting? And I'm there. It's not for any other person. It's not for anybody. But it's for selected people. Two, three people, and you are there. Two, three people, you are there. I don't know how I got there, but I'm there. I'm entitled to be there. You can be entitled to be in a meeting with your vice chancellor. Two, three people meeting, not the one of general people, though. Two, three people, you can, you can be entitled to be the head of NHS, whatever, in the UK. And you are qualified to be there by rights. You are, you are to be there. And it's just two, three people. You are in the meeting. And that three, two, three people, your, 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 what you say will matter. Am I talking now? Is that by just one, um, one eating burger? Daniel turned things around. Ephesians 5.16 says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. We must redeem the time. Things are happening. We've lost so much ground. We must recover. We must what? We must recover. Recover, recover. Our sufficiency is not of our abilities, but of God. If we read 2 Corinthians 3 verse 5, none that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God. Therefore, I always say that if you are not a person of prayer, you are proud. If you can't humble yourself in the place of prayer, you are a proud brother, sister. That means you are who you are because of who you are. But you are nothing. If God takes his grace out of you, you are nothing. I will end in the last one. The triumphant church is a glowing and growing church. Glowing, G-L-O-W. And growing, G-R-O-W. We are to grow. We are to glow. Psalm 2 verse 8 says, Ask of me and I will give you the nation's for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. Acts. Matthew 28, 
19 to 20 says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son and of the Holy Spirit. We are to go. We are to keep going. Thank God that we can appear. For beyond our appearance, we are to go and bring others. Amen? Are we ready to go? We are to go and bring others. We can do it. I will share this again. In 2009, what changed our story was going. We started pastoring January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. We went to the university to host an event. Overnight, we had 60, 50, 60 young men join the church. 50, 60 what? The place we were using was too small for us. We moved. We moved overnight. From there, we moved to this place. We moved to another place near the university, then we came here. It's by going. We are two inside. Let's go outside. Amen? It's time to go. Go individually and go collectively. I said, what? Go individually and go. I was that period, we've done all the flyers, we've done everything, and I saw somebody on wheelchair in the university. I was giving out flyers for the event. And somehow, I, I think I, I said, have this flyer, you can be healed. Something like that. And before I know it, I went back home, the university was calling me. Somebody said, you gave her a flyer and you are sure that, that she'll be healed. And therefore, the person said, you're giving her fake assurance. Therefore, your event will be closed. <laughs> the devil, you're in trouble. <laughs> The devil, you are in what? Trouble. I have to run down to, to the university and, and talk to them. I said, yes, I gave the person the flyer. And yes, we're going to praise God. And in God's presence, anything is possible. If only you believe. It wasn't even that. that, that was, those are not the, the, the problem is not the person. The problem is about the souls that we are at stake. Because if they stop the event, the souls will, will be denied the souls. By the time we've gone through all the hazards, so many hazards, by the time we've gone through the hazards and we had the event, that was how the doors were opened for us at the university. Hallelujah. They call us a student church. And I, I, will, I, will, and I will boldly say, let it be. I'm at the university every day, every Sunday. Amen. Tell me another pastor that is at the university every Sunday, giving that food. If you're not that, then you're not that. I am there every day. So if you call me that, let it be. It's a good name. It's my birthday. My devotion will send me a birthday greeting. And let it be. She knows me by name. Amen. You two will be known for something. In the mighty name of Jesus. I, I want the president to know me, the prime minister to know me by name. I'm a citizen. Am I right? You two can be known. I call my Las Vegas was able to call Ronaldo and Ronaldo say yes. Are you talking now? Because he knows the young man. That the young man can play. He can deliver. Why go to my enemy? Man City. Sorry. If you're a fan of that, I'm for us now. We are struggling. <laughs> now we are winning now. From tragedy, what? To triumph. <laughs> Let's rise up, church. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead and bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are for everybody. Amen. We are for what? Everybody. Every man, every woman. Man, woman, boy, girl, wherever you are, I am low. You will make impact. You will triumph in the mighty name of Jesus. Why not rise up and just bless the name of Jesus? 
bless the name, whatever it has been that has that's supposed to be a tragedy. Say, Lord, turn it around. Turn it around. Turn it around. Turn it around. Transition from tragedy to triumph. In the mighty name of Jesus. Turn that tragedy around. I don't know what is... You know, there are some things... In some situations, you just feel that things are not right around you. Psalm 126 says, When the Lord turned again, the captivity of Zion, they were like them that dream. Great for the same because the Lord has done great things, great things He has done for us. Therefore, our mouth was filled with laughter. You will laugh last. I said, You will laugh last. I said, You will laugh last. In the mighty name of Jesus. I see you triumphing in the name of Jesus. That situation, that indication of tragedy shall be aborted. That tragedy will be aborted. You know, sometimes you have that feeling that, oh, mm, you just know that things won't, won't be good. No. God will turn it around. He will step in and turn things around. From good to better, from better to best. Your life will not go down. Your life has been good before. It will get better. If it has been better before, it will get to the best. In the name of Jesus. I don't know how the future holds. It looks like it's gloomy. No, it shall be glowing. It shall be glowing. In the mighty name of Jesus, things will be beautiful. Life will be glorious. In the mighty name of Jesus. I don't know whether you are afraid of things that that may come up, you are afraid that oh, it is what, how my life will be, my life ought to have been better no, God will step in because it says what is impossible for men, it is possible with God, with God all things are possible it said I've already started doing something brand new, hallelujah God is doing a brand new thing in your life in the name of Jesus let me tell you, at sometimes before the new will appear, you have to, we've said it last week, you have to go through the wilderness. The wilderness is an indication that the new is around the corner. You are restless where you are. The, the, the new is around, when the woman is about to give birth, that is the height of pain. The, at the night moon, the height of pain, that means is an indication that the baby is yet, it, it, it's about to come forth. Hallelujah. You are about to give birth. And that baby will not what will not be aborted. It shall not come as still. It will come at life. In the mighty name of Jesus, there shall be no miscarriage. I said there shall be no miscarriage. In the name of Jesus, you will triumph. Hallelujah. You will shout. You will laugh last. Yes, you shall testify of the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We are marching on. Amen. And I want us to go in that understanding. We are marching on in this new season. I want us to so invest in prayer. If all that you can do, all that you can take this afternoon is prayer. Please get because it will help you and it will help the church when you are cooked in prayer. I, only you can chase at least some seven, ten demons. <laughs> Amen. One will chase a thousand, two will what? Just 10,000. So by the time you are cooked in fire, I am cooked in fire, Sister B is cooked in fire, ah, the doors will be open for us. The city will be open for us. In the mighty name of Jesus. So I want you all of us to go and get charged, get cooked. Cooked in prayer. Cooked in prayer. Be deliberate every week. Two, three nights. I will do about two, three hours. Maybe two nights in a week. Two, three hours. You you, you, you cook yourself. I wake up those days. I will wake up. I was wake up from the as I wake up, just like as if I have one phone call. As I wake up, I'm on my feet. I'm walking to Shipley. Two, three hours. I'm on the street. Before I come back, another four hours. I'm still walking on my feet. That is the way I pray. That is the way I love to pray. That is the way I take my city. I take my I take the land. And I'm going through jungles, going through forests. Going around the city, midnight, 
taking land, taking the places, taking, taking, take, taking the far ends of the city of Bradford, walking to train stations, as many that enter this city, I take them. Going to the interchange, as they drop into the land, I take them. That the church will be an household name. As they come to the university, the chapel of grace will be known. Hallelujah. It didn't just get to the chapel of grace. It has been long declared at midnight. Amen. We can continue. All of us can do that. In your workplace. Be in charge. Be in charge. Be in charge. No, there's no more time for us to be crawling. You sew high. It's time to sew her. It is time to sew her. So, Father, we thank you. I decree and I declare over your people from this moment, let your people sow her like the eagle in the name of Jesus. Turn around every perceived tragedy to triumph in the name of Jesus. Turn things around for your people. Hallelujah. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. You've heard this word you, with all eyes closed. You don't know Jesus. I want to give an opportunity. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you as a sinner. Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Wash my sins away. With your precious blood, accept me as your son and as your daughter. Write my name in the book of life. Give me the grace to walk with you in this new thing that you're about to do. Let me be part of it. If that is your prayer, you are a child of God. You are in the house. You can wave your hand and I will seal it up with your prayer. You want to be born again. You want to be restored back to God's family. Is there anyone in the house? Father, we thank you. We bless you. And we give you all the glory. Shout hallelujah. Shout glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed.